Hi there everybody, it's UK independent stamping up demonstrator Helsey here from slimandstylish.stampingup.net. Thank you very much for joining me today. This is the card that we're going to be creating. Now I fell in love with this set when I saw it in the catalogue, but I wasn't 100% sure of how versatile it would be as to how many cards I could make with it. It's the Stamped with Love Photopolymer stamp set and it's got this copyright stamping up bit which is the thing you need for the angels policy. You know, if ever you're creating and selling your cards, you need to stamp them with the copyright stamping up on the back. So it's a really handy set to have. Now I'm using the post box and the letter for this card and inside the letter you can fit one of the sentiments which I'm going to do later. So I'm just mounting these up ready to stamp now. And I'm going to be stamping these onto some scrap basic white because what I'm going to be doing is fussy cutting these out and added them to the card. There are no die sets with this set, so you will need to fussy cut, or if you've got a scan and cut, cut it that way. But fussy cutting's fine, they're pretty much straight images, so it wasn't too hard to do. Now, I did have a think about this. Our post boxes in England are predominantly bright red and I was thinking about doing this bright red to match it but that's quite a big pow statement on a card I feel. I do feel at one point I will do you a bright red one but for today I'm going to keep it sort of neutral tones, keeping it greys and making it into more of a, a monochromey type card. I do like monochromes when it comes to weddings and um, things like that because I think it's very cliche being red with hearts and things. So just fussy cutting around them. The hardest part was to fussy cut around the pen because as I said, all the rest was straight lines. But just go past that bit um, and come back to it later. I find it much easier to fussy cut when there's less paper hanging on and you've just got a little snip to do. Okay, so there we go, all the way around. I really like that this is a fountain pen as well. I love fountain pens. I've just got back into using them. Again, I use the um, cartridgeless ones, but oh my goodness, since I've started using them again, I can't go back to ballpoints now. Love them. Love them. If you come into my office and it's all different coloured inks at the back, all different coloured pens, I'm thoroughly enjoying using those. So this is where you can fit the sentiment in the middle. And there's a couple of sentiments for you to pick. This is the one that I've picked and it's really, really fancy font. So it always looks lovely and it looks like you actually have written it on there with that fountain pen. And it says, love you always. How cute is that? So now we're on to the colouring. I'm using a mixture with this card of smoky slate and grey granite. So I'm starting off with the dark and light smoky slate around the edges of my post box. And then I'm going to be blending it in with the light smoky slate. Okay, I'm not doing any of the detail that's in it. I'm just doing the post box to start off with. I'm going to come in and do the detail with a grey granite because I just wanted that to be slightly more defined, you know, where they post the letters and everything else. So I'm using a mixture of the brush tip and the bullet tip. The bullet tip's great for detail, but the brush tip just gets the colour on quickly and enables you to just get on with the job, which I quite like. It also allows you to build up those layers so that you can blend it quite nicely. You can see I'm darker on the left-hand side than I am on the right-hand side, and that's all helped that brush tip. Okay, so around all the detail bits, you don't want to get into those, and it's quite a quick and simple one to do being a square. Where I found a quick and simple one. Sometimes when it's uh, pretty little flowers and things, you have to spend a bit more time going round, but because this was square, you could just do a straight line and off you go. Okay, for the detail bits, like I said, I'm going to be playing with grey granite. I'm also going to bring in a bit of the light wild wheat. Now I'm loving that colour. I know it's not everyone's favourite. Um, I know it's your own personal choice, but I quite like it and I thought it would add like a gold ton to onto this. So I've just used it for around the frame of that post box and then in the actual letter slot and the main detail piece, I'm using grey granite. And I'm also using the wild wheat just for the stamp area of the pen. And we come back and use it on the um, fountain pen element as well. Okay, so you just finish colouring that in. So once you finish colouring them in, 
All you need to do is work out how you want to position them onto your cardstock. So this is 10.5 by 14.8 centimeter cardstock, the exact same size as my card base. And looking at it, I just thought it looked a little bit blank. So I went and got the Zany Zoo DSP. So I love this. It's got the pattern on the front, but it's got these black and white images on the back. And I decided to use my circle punch and cut out this one with the flowers. I just thought it was nice. And the fact that the card's a monochrome card, it worked quite well. Now what you could have done is if you have done the post box in red or you've coloured it in in any sort of colour, you could use these flowers and you could colour those in with your blends to add that colour into your card and make it still pop. That would work as well. There's this tiny, tiny little heart stamp in this set. Now I must admit when I first saw it I did panic because I can guarantee this is going to be the stamp that I lose. <laughs> it is teensy but it's really cute and it's great for just adding some background detail onto your card. So I just stamped that around where I'm going to be popping the images to finish it off. Okay, after I'd finished doing that, I realized I hadn't actually stuck down my image pieces, which was probably a bit silly in hindsight. So I've held down the pieces and just took one up, adhered that one, put it back where it was and then gone to the others. Ordinarily, I would have stuck these down before doing the hearts so that I made sure the hearts were still in the right place. Okay, I'm using a mixture of adhesive. So I used my seal adhesive for the DSP to keep it flat and still. And I'm using my dimensionals for the other pieces to pop them up. Okay, so you just want to pop that one up behind the envelope. Now the envelope you want to be clever with, with your dimensionals, you don't want to put a dimensional where it's going to sit on the letterbox. So just put a couple on the bottom and then it will sit flat just at the top so you can use your adhesive to stick that down and then that will stick onto the letterbox and it will all be the same height. And there we go. Love you always. I'm going to be using some metallic enamel effects on this but before I do I'm going to adhere it to my card base because the metallic enamel effects while I love them, they do take a good five minutes to dry. So make sure that the last thing you add onto your card and then leave your card on the side. And I'm using the silver one because we've now got these new metallic colours, silver, copper and gold. And I love this silver one. And there we go, my finished card. Isn't it stunning? I really like it. What do you think? Let me know below. And here's the finished project. Thank you for joining me. I do hope that you enjoyed the video. Everything I've used today is available from slimandstylish.stampingup.net. If you did enjoy the video, please do drop me a like or leave me a comment. And if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe and come back for more content. I also have an Instagram page that I'm trying to grow at the same time. It's at slimandstylish and every like or follow helps. Thanks everybody for joining me. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. Bye.